So let's talk about insulin, um, since I know we don't have a ton of time left. And this is a hot button issue for many people. One, because it's such a widely used drug in the United States. Um, it was a part of these reconciliation negotiations. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't make it in. But um, also, I think it's, it's used as a uh, campaign issue for some Democrats, because as I mentioned, it's so widely used. And two, it's so cheap to make and is so heavily gouged by the pharmaceutical industry. Talk a bit about insulin's role in, um, in price gouging by uh, for-profit healthcare in this country and um, just the extent to which that is harming so many millions of people. Well, Emma, insulin is a perfect issue to talk about because there are two aspects to it. One is that the insulin, insulin used to be animal, a, animal insulin. It was patented in 1923 as uh, uh, extract of animal pancreases where the insulin was being made in the animals. And <clears throat> until 1982, all insulin came from animals. But in 1982, insulin became the first genetically engineered drug and they could uh, splice the gene for human insulin into E. coli bacteria and have vats of E. coli bacteria turn into insulin manufacturing plants. In 1982, the first uh, genetically engineered insulin came out and that was called recombinant human insulin. The molecular structure of that insulin was exactly the same as human insulin, though the folding of the protein was slightly different and it didn't function exactly as human insulin does. And then in uh, 1996, the uh, drug companies started to come out with a new class of insulin called insulin analogs, which were different than recombinant human insulin by one or two amino acids that purportedly got it to fold better and act in a more physiologic way. And, and it's those insulin analogs now that are the insulins that cost $300 per vial. Um, now, what happened is only three companies make the insulin analogs or have made the insulin analogs. So they acted as a cartel and the price of this insulin went from $21 a vial back when they first came out in 1996 to up to $300 a vial, an enormous price gouging. But the key here is that when drug companies gouge, they don't just gouge on price, they gouge on volume. And this is so important. And that this, what I'm going to tell you, has been lost in the debate. Nobody has said it in the debate about the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. 80% um, of the insulin that's used in the United States is used by people with type 2 diabetes, not type 1 diabetes. So they're manufacturing some insulin, but not enough to control their blood sugar. And you can't control the blood sugar with one or two other drugs. And they get put on insulin. Now, the drug companies went through this, and this is in the fourth chapter of my book, and the drug companies took over the medical standards from the doctors, and, and they uh, proliferated this idea that uh, insulin analogs were necessary in order to provide the full medical benefit to people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So, and it was in the New England Journal, and it was in the Journal of the American Medical Association, and it was in the guidelines from the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists and so forth. And that became the standard of care, that insulin analogs were better than recombinant insulin, which was, as the price went up, the recombinant insulin only cost about a tenth as much um, than, as the insulin analogs. But the truth is, as I show in uh, chapter four, that the insulin analogs are not superior for the 80% of the people who are taking, uh, who have type two diabetes. And we're spending uh, about 10 times more on insulin analogs than we need to spend on recombinant hum human insulin to achieve the same outcome. Now, if you're a drug manufacturer, an insulin manufacturer, and there are uh, people like me who are starting to tell this story publicly, what do you do? And it, on top of which the drug Manufacturers are really facing a serious situation because there are nonprofit drug manufacturers coming online who can make and sell insulin analogs, not for $300 a vial, but
but for $35 a vial. They can actually manufacture and distribute the insulin for $35 a vial. So if you're a CEO of one of the uh, insulin analog makers, there's a brilliant solution to this, which is pass a law that says the copay for insulin that consumers will pay is no more than $35. So when, the, when these new insulins come out that only cost $35 come out and their doctor says, hey, you can get this biosimilar insulin for $35, the patients are going to say, because the pharmaceutical industry will be maximizing their PR efforts to convince them, the, the, the patients are going to say, well, I don't want that biosimilar uh, insulin. I hear from whatever, news stories or whatever, that it's not as good, besides which the expensive insulin, insulin analog, is only going to cost me $35. So the patients have no incentive to go to the less expensive insulin, and the insulin manufacturers are continue, continuing to charge their outrageous prices for insulin analogs when insulin analogs aren't even needed to take care of people with type 2 diabetes. So much of the problem with drugs has to do with the knowledge that's available to doctors and this insulin copay of $35 is a brilliant mechanism to cover up that knowledge getting out. And, and in terms of the journal's uh, roles in this, uh, returning to where we started towards the beginning of our interview, talking about the New England uh, Medical Journal, essentially basing their uh, publishings off of corporate influence summaries from these drug man, uh, drug manufacturers, how prevalent is that in th this case with the insulin analog, uh, insulin analog uh, incident? <laughs> well, in this case, we have the studies that are done. This is another huge issue in American medicine. We have the studies that are done by the manufacturers of the insulin analogs, and they may show that insulin analogs uh, create a finer minute-by-minute um, minute control of uh, insulin in people who use them. They'll make up an endpoint like that. That could be a real endpoint. But what they do not do and what they do not have to do is to actually do a study that compares the insulin analog to the older recombinant mm. human insulin to see if there's a clinical benefit. It's not been done. So those studies that the Cochrane Reviews that look at that issue, you have to kind of take one set of studies and compare them to the results of another set of studies, but there's not been a head-on study. And well, that's because the be? manufacturers pay. Yeah. yeah, why would there be, right? If there's no profit you incentive, they're not going to do a study on insulin analog versus uh, insulin. Exactly. There's not just a pro no profit incentive. There's a loss that's yeah. going to happen because their insulin isn't better. Um, so it's going to cost them a fortune if they do a study comparing the two. And if they thought their insulin was really better, you got to bet that they would have done the study. Oh, yeah. And um, lastly, before I let you go, what about public financing of some of these uh, studies as a, uh, a way to one of the prongs to combat this? Because, you know, we need some price caps like they have in other countries. Uh, we need, of course, single payer health care. That's the, the big white whale. Um, we need a lot of things. But in terms of, look, uh, right now Pfizer's taking all the credit for the COVID vaccine when taxpayer money, money was in, uh, integral in the development of uh, these COVID vaccines. Um, you know, so maybe as a, a path forward, what is your opinion on broader support for public financing of research uh, and having ta uh, some conditions attached to that um, due to the taxpayer investment? Absolutely. Uh, or to, for the FDA to change its rules. So now the FDA has to prove that a diabetic drug isn't, doesn't have an adverse effect on cardiovascular events. Well, there's no reason to prove the diabetic drug, um, go, that, not to make the diabetic drug, the manufacturer, add in the best alternative therapy to compare to their drug um, so that you wouldn't even have to have public financing if you made the best active comparator mandatory for a study. Now, if that's too much to ask, 
your solution is exactly right. These studies are expensive, but they're not that expensive. We're wasting about $20 billion a year on insulin analogs for people with type 2 diabetes. And you could certainly have done a clinical trial of comparing the first generation and second generation of bioengineered insulin. Um, you could have done that uh, 20 years ago, and we would have known a whole lot more. And there's just one short point I want to make. When you have a drug, drugs like um, statins to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, or diabetes for that matter, the drug companies never add a lifestyle arm to their studies. So if you want to know, say, if lowering cholesterol with a statin reduces the risk of heart disease, a rational healthcare system would have a lifestyle arm in that so that we would see if lifestyle um, mm. was more effective or as effective as a statin and whether the two together were better than the two individually, you know, either one individually. There's just no reason for that. So that's an indication people aren't dumb. That's not an indication that they're not smart enough to add another arm. It's an indication of the power of the pharmaceutical industry to influence public policy. Because there really is no incentive, to, to use that word again, to analyze lifestyle or to analyze or to do preventative care um, as a best practice, at, in addition to, of course, you know, manufacturing drugs that people need. But that's not even in the equation, it seems. That's exactly right. It, it doesn't have to not be in the equation. It could be part of American drug uh, regula regulatory policy that those studies have to be done, lifestyle studies, uh, best comparator studies. It's because of the enormous amount of influence that pharma has on both Democrats and Republicans that these things don't happen. It's not because people aren't smart. Th there are plenty of people who are smart, but this is a demonstration not of intellectual capacity. It's a demonstration of political power, just raw political power. 